Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my 03 Dodge Durango. It's a 4.7 liter, and today I'm going to be flushing and refilling the cooling system. This is something you want to do about every two years or so to keep your cooling system at its peak performance. Antifreeze is very toxic to animals. Make sure not to let it drain into the sewer. Make sure that it, if it gets on your garage floor or wherever you're working, that you clean it up as well as, as you possibly can, because this stuff can kill. Make sure to have plenty of rags, a nice drain pan, and things like that to pick up any that you might spill. So first things first, you gotta drain the coolant. So Chrysler, in their infinite wisdom, made getting access to the radiator drain plug less than ideal. You can find it by going on the driver's side of the vehicle, going straight down. It's right there. Now you may think you have some access to it, but unless you have tiny, tiny, tiny hands, it's not that simple. And then on top of that, the actual drain itself is over top the bumper. So even if you did get to the drain plug, it would spew out all over your bumper and then go wherever liquid decided to go at that moment instead of into your drain pan. So the easiest way I've found is to remove this cover, which is underneath the front of the vehicle, which means you can gain access to the drain plug through this hole in the stock bumper. To remove the cover, there are a couple plastic clips. Here, here, up here, and a couple across the front. If you get a tool similar to this one, you can just take it and pry like that, and do that all the way around and remove the cover. Now that you have the cover off, you can get clear access to the drain cock right there as well as its pour spout right there. Okay, now once you have access to the drain plug, you also have the problem of the pour spout being right over the bumper. The way I solve that is I use a little bit of 3 8 fuel line and stick it over the spout like that and stick the other end into a bucket so that the fluid doesn't spill out all over the place. Because the cooling system is a sealed system, to allow the coolant to flow out easier, it's a good idea to remove the radiator cap. Now that you have access and you have a hose on the spout, so you take a pair of pliers and you turn it counterclockwise. It's hard to do with just one hand, so you turn it counterclockwise, it'll get you right there. It won't turn any further than that, at which point you need to pull and turn and it'll open up. Once the pet cock is done draining, close it back off by turning it clockwise and pushing inward and remove your hose. So once you've drained the radiator, it's a good idea to also drain what's left inside the reservoir. To do this, this hose right here connects down at the very bottom of this reservoir. So you need to take this hose off. So you take a pair of pliers, you twist it first to break it free from the plastic and then remove. It's like a little Chinese finger trap. Then you direct this hose down through the engine bay down into your drain pan. To avoid having the water spill everywhere as you're trying to angle it down, you can take an old spark plug and just shove it down the hole. That'll help seal it up so that it won't spill out all over the place as you're trying to maneuver it. Grab the hose, remove the spark plug, and let the fluid come out. Once this hose is done draining, snake it back up and attach it to the upper radiator hose. Okay, I don't know if you can see in there, but now my reservoir is drained. There's still a little bit of residue on the bottom, but there's also a lot of gunk on the bottom too. So it might be a good idea to flush it out a couple times with some just regular water to get as much of the dirt out as you can. So we've drained out all the fluid from the radiator and the reservoir. Now we need to drain the fluid out of the block. So this lower radiator hose can be a little bit difficult to remove because there's not a lot of room in here to get leverage on the hose in order to pull it off. So since we need to remove the thermostat in order to drain the block, it's easiest just to remove these eight millimeter bolts, one here and one on the other side, and remove the thermostat housing itself, draining the block and the lower radiator hose at the same time. Again, be careful, this can be messy, so make sure you have your catch pan and rags and towels handy. So one thing you might consider doing while unscrewing the thermostat housing bolts is setting up a little makeshift funnel out of some tin foil. Otherwise, it's going to hit the frame and pretty much go wherever water decides to go at that moment. So to reduce the amount of mess, you can just put a little funnel here and have it go right into your bucket. Here's what I'm talking about. Okay, now that the thermostat housing is off, 
you just pull the thermostat out. Now, when you do this, a lot of coolant's gonna come out from behind the thermostat. I've already pulled this thermostat, so that's why that nothing came out this time. But just be careful and know that fluid will come out when you remove the thermostat itself. Okay, once you have the coolant system drained out completely, now might be a good time to replace the upper and lower hoses as well as the thermostat while you're in there. I have another video covering how to do that that I'll link to in the description. So one thing I wanted to show, was in the housing itself. There's a notch right there and another notch right there that the thermostat is supposed to mate into. That ensures that you install the thermostat in the correct orientation. It does actually matter. On the stock thermostat, there's a little tab right here and there is this little metal vent right here. Those need to fit into the thermostat housing to orient the vent up so it's on the top. This helps in bleeding the cooling system because if the vent was on the bottom, air would get trapped up here and never get out. But if it's on the top, air won't get trapped, it'll bleed through and then it'll be able to cycle through the system and get bled out completely. So to show you how, how this works, you've got the little tab right here and it goes into the little slot right there. Only one way that it can go in. So now you need to just wipe off the mating surface. Make sure it's free of any contaminants or scratches or gouges. Insert the thermostat into the housing because it is a bit of a snug fit and make sure that you align it properly. So try to line it up with those notches that I showed earlier. Press it in there, make sure it's nice and snug. Sorry, I can't show this any better. Now line it up with the housing. Insert the screws for the housing, making sure that they go in straight. You do not want to cross thread these. Start them by hand. Once you've got them started, now you can snug them down. These metal dowels right here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, these little brass dowels, those will ensure that this thing lines up properly within the casing. Now you torque them down to 200 inch-pounds. Okay, once you're satisfied that the hose is not kinked and that it's installed correctly, install your clips. Okay, now that we've drained the coolant and all the hoses are back on and the drain plug on the radiator is closed and now I'm going to start filling it up with coolant. I use this thing called a spill-free funnel. It's actually pretty cool, it makes it so I don't spill any coolant coming out of the bleeder hole or anything like that. It comes with varying adapters. This is the one, this is the adapter set that I need for this vehicle, these two pieces. And it comes with a little plug so you can plug the funnel if you have too much fluid in here once you've uh, bled everything out. So once you've gotten the funnel full of fluid, it's up to about here right now, you want to open up the bleeder screw right here. This will ensure that all the air in the system is out before you start the motor. It's a 5 16 Allen. Just crack it until you start seeing fluid come out. Like that. Then you can tighten it back down again. Just snug it back down. like that, and clean up any fluid that may have come out. Okay, now that everything's done, and you still have some fluid left in this funnel, so you need to remove the funnel and put the remainder into the overflow container. So just to prep, you open the container, move the dipstick aside. So to make it so that you don't spill coolant out everywhere when you remove this, you wanna squeeze the radiator hose slightly and then put the plug in. And then let go of the radiator hose and you should have a little bit of a gap and no coolant should be coming out. Now you just dump the remainder of the fluid into the overflow bin. Now you can remove your adapter and you notice that the coolant is actually below the radiator cap right now. That's fine. Once, the, once you take the car for a test drive the fluid will be sucked from the reserve through this tube and into here and it'll clear itself out. Now you want to clean off any coolant that you may have spilled. Take it for a test drive, maybe about 10-15 minutes. Coolant leaks typically occur when the system is under pressure. So you want to drive it for about 15-20 minutes to where the radiator cap will have opened and the thermostat is opened and things like that so that coolant is flowing throughout the entire system and double check for leaks. If you have any leaks, you should address them as soon as possible. 
it's a good idea to hose down the motor and any area that got fluid on it so that you can easily detect coolant leaks after your test drive. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe.